Hi, we're Sharon and Andy. Welcome to Finca Life. In 2019 we bought a derelict finca that used to be a bodega in the Mercia region of Spain. The building was an empty shell with no main services, water, electric or sewage and we're restoring it doing all the work ourselves with the view to giving us an off-grid debt-free home. In addition to this, self-sufficiency is very important to us so we're going to aim to produce as much of our own food as possible and the idea behind these videos is to log our progress but also to provide you with something you hopefully find interesting and informative. Please join us on our journey. Welcome back. First of all, thank you to all of you that have subscribed already to our channel. We've had some great comments and interesting questions, so thank you for that. Um, one of those questions was, because we are completely off-grid here, where do you get your water from? Well, that's a very good question. In this part of Spain, we get 300 days of sunshine a year and less than or on average 300 millimeters of rainfall a year which is 12 inches not a lot so it is important to maximize whatever does fall out of the sky in today's video then we're going to address this issue uh, show you how we've tried to maximize how much rainwater we collect where we store it how we purify it and um, how we've piped it to the house because there were no water pipes or anything in uh, on the property when we first came. So I hope you enjoy the video and as again any comments more than welcome. Basically we have two huge underground water deposits. Uh, the first one collects rain water off the roof, the second one collects storm rain that runs down off the land. So let's go and have a look exactly how we collect that. The first deposit is in the courtyard and we're looking at it from above. This is where rainwater is diverted off the roof. Um, we only collect water off about half the roof, which is 100 square metres in total. And starting on the left, the apartment roof, that's the main house roof and the workshop roof. And you can see the gutters there. Hopefully you can see the gutters there and they come down a pipe that goes directly into the well. The well holds 7,000 litres and if we get average rainfall, which Sharon's already said is about 300 millimetres a year, um, that should give us 30,000 litres or thereabouts. So this is the second deposit um, that collects the water from storms. Um, it holds approximately 40,000 litres. We don't know for sure, but it's huge. If you can see the massive boulders behind me, they came out of the land when we dug for the septic tank. Imagine how difficult it was digging this massive deposit by hand over 100 years ago. Okay, so if you look to my left, you will see that where the solar panel is, how the land uh, comes down. Our driveway is on a decline as well and you can't see but from where the steps are up to the back of the apartment that also is sloping down. All of it leads towards this deposit. The ground in front of me you probably can't see but that slight is slightly raised and so the water rushes down when it's raining and then is channeled into a little collection point at the side of the deposit, which we'll show you. So I'm now sitting in the collection point for the deposit. Um, when it, as I say, a heavy rain, it rushes down here, little channel here, excuse the weeds, need to do a bit of weeding, we've had a lot of rain recently, um, into here. And then what happens is any sediment or rubbish that's washed down off the land sinks to the bottom. And then as the water level rises, it goes through this hole here into the main deposit. We know it works. We had a terrible storm the other week, um, 30 millimetres of rain in about an hour. It was ridiculous. And it put 3,000 litres into the deposit. So that's how we collect our water. If all else fails, we can have it delivered. We had 20,000 litres delivered a couple of weeks ago now. 
um, because we hadn't up until then had hardly any rain this year and I mentioned before we're going to be repairing this well at some point but it's not important at the moment we just strapped it up so it doesn't fall down any further so now I get to go sitting in the hole um, these pipes as Sharon mentioned we have a pump down the well down the well I keep calling it a well it's not a well it's a deposit wells bring water from things it just stores water and collects it um, we've got a pump down there which pumps up through this pipe here this tap if we open that one sends it to our big storage tank in the bodega in the workshop and this one we can collect a hose pipe to open the valve and we send that up and we've got a thousand litres of story, water storage up the garden now so we pump that up, fill that up and we're able to water the garden from there so this is the tank um, where we pump the water from the two external deposits into it's 7,000 litres um, you can't make it out very clear because it's only got a small access hole uh, it's where they used to keep the wine and we actually had to seal it up and we, we did fill it up with water and it leaked, it all drained away or most of it drained away so then we sealed it with some concrete sealer which was supposed to do the job and we filled it up again and the water drained away then we tried some then we tried some reservoir sheeting and lined it all with that and we filled it up and it soaked away so eventually we ended up and we got some food grade epoxy resin coating and sealed the whole lot and as you can see it now holds 7,000 litres of water I hope you can hear me alright we've got a really sunny day and the inverters whirring away in the background keep keeping itself cool so when to fill the water tank we've got two pipes come in this pump here pumps from the the first well that we showed you um, it's actually a suction pump that sucks the water out of there through a series of pipes we have to open this valve and close that valve it goes through a 5 micron filter and then it goes into the tank hence filling it up <laughs> okay. um, this pipe, so we can reverse the process we close that valve and open this one and the pump that's down the, the second deposit that we showed you that comes in here again through a 5 micron filter this one is probably ready for changing and into the deposit and fills it up into our, our internal deposit and fills it up from there this pump and this pipe this supplies the house this sucks it out of the tank um, it's an automatic self-priming do it all flashy posh pump which sends the water this way through a series of filters Okay, so the, the first of the filters, when it leaves the tank and heads through the house, is a 5 micron sediment filter basically. Then it goes into a 1 micron filter. Then this is a, a charcoal carbon uh, chemical filter, filters out any nasties. And then this is a UV water steriliser, which makes it drinkable. You must have a 1 micron filter in the system before you UV filter because the nasty little germs can actually hide behind particles bigger than one micron so that's why they're in that order putting that one before this one these are more expensive keeps that one clean I've just changed these today but I haven't changed that one for quite a while now then from there off it goes to the house um, these are the two that we just changed, the 1 micron and the 5 micron. You can see they do work incredibly well. Um, we, have, we have actually tested our water as well with one of those testing kits and it's coming out lovely, fresh as you like. Um, initially, put them over there, they can go in the bin. Initially, this is the system we had in. Um, we have the two filters, which were um, with the 1 micron and the 5 micron. We got rid of those because we like the, the CC ones where you can see when the filters are dirty and not just wait for the water to stop coming out of your tap to know you've got to change them. And then instead of the UV filter and the chemical filter, we had this, it's some silvery, supposed to be a whole house filter. 
um, that does the job of the UV and the chemical filter and that lived in that thing there unfortunately it's not a whole house filter or no in our case it wasn't because we couldn't we got barely any any water flow out of the taps or anything um, digging into it a bit more it says you may need to add two or even three of these to get sufficient flow to serve your house at uh, 100 and odd quid a shot that wasn't even an option anyway we'll go on now and look at how we got it to the house and the, the process including digging up the land okay so the purified water then comes out a pipe around the middle where that big stone is somewhere there underground in a trench so we had to have Eddie the digger in to be, dig a big trench we did that at the same time as we had our septic tank and everything dug um, so that we could put um, all our services our sewage our fresh water and our electricity from the solar um, in the same trench so it comes round here and all the way along the front of the house and into the house so let's go there now Okay, so from the front of the house, the water comes under here into the main house there. That's going to be our main bathroom on this wall. Um, and the sewage comes out. That's into our sewage pumping station, which is for another video. But then the water continues on up to the utility room, which it enters just, just to the right of the, uh, the patio doors there you can see. The water enters the utility room here. It's branched off. That side goes upstairs to our new bathroom in the apartment and what's going to be run a little loo down here as well. Plus it'll eventually feed the sink and things that are going to be in here. Excuse the mess, it is a building site. Um, we put a temporary cold tap in here, so we've got water. We've got hot water, comes on the hot water system here. Again, very temporary. Um, this is the fill line, comes off the main feed to fill our hot water, solar hot water tank. And this is the supply line for the solar hot water tank, which gets converted into hot water. On the roof there, you can see our solar water, hot water collector. Um, it's a 120 litre tank. It actually boils. Um, when it's been in the sun, usually around sort of the solar noon, which is about two o'clock in the summer, it bubbles away and gets steaming. So we're upstairs in the apartment now. The hot water tank is on the on this wall outside on the roof. Um, if you remember from downstairs, this is the fill for the tank. The cold water goes in there, and the hot water comes out there after going through the boil, the coil and the boiling water in the tank. Because it gets that hot, we've put a thermostatic mixer valve on here, which automatically mixes cold water, or the cold water feed, the hot water coming out of the tank, to give a temp, um, water with temperature that won't scald you. This runs off to feed the bathroom, both of these after the hot and the cold sparred off as well. We're going to be putting a kitchen for the apartment in here, so all the water's there right behind it, and then the water that's going to, the hot water that's going to feed the bathroom um, in the other side of the house is going to have its own feed from the from the tank outside, an independent feed, probably with another one of these on as well. So we're in the bedroom now. Um, it is a building site. Do bear that in mind. The hole there is where the hot water, the cold water goes in and the hot water comes out from the other room. That comes along here. This is all going to be lovely boxed in. The hot water in the corner there disappears downstairs and the hot water for the bathroom is that pipe there which runs under the cardboard and disappears into the bathroom through the wall there. Okay, so from the bedroom under the floor, the pipes come into the bathroom to feed the shower to feed the toilet and to feed the sink and it works all right that's it for today we hope you enjoyed the video if so please don't forget to subscribe if you've not already done so click on the like button and also the bell to receive future notifications of future videos thanks for watching